What is up? Welcome to every single guitars where the goal of this channel is to review every single guitar ever made. I've actually never personally owned this brand or model of guitar. I've always seen it. I've always known about the brand. I've played it at guitar stores and whatnot, but I've actually never purchased one and owned one. I thought that was pretty interesting. So I decided to pick this guitar up and purchase it for the first time. I have a 1973 Guild D25 Cherry. I've always known about Guild, but I did play around, not just with this guitar, but different Guilds, and I've always had a good experience. I never thought that, you know, it was a cheap guitar. I didn't, I never classified it as a lower end guitar. I always thought it was a, you know, decent, reputable, and pretty well-rounded made in USA guitar. So, you know, I figured, you know, why not? Why not just buy a Guild? It's a good company. It's a reputable company. It's an old company. So I decided to purchase one and check one out and see how it is. So right off the bat, my first impression when I saw this guitar was, I don't know if this is solid wood. You know, I don't really have too much experience with identifying, you know, what's solid and what's not solid and what's laminate and etc. But just from a first impression, the wood finish on this does not look like a natural wood guitar. It kind of reminds me of my, my 90s Epiphone SG Cherry that I've owned and I've also reviewed on this channel. In that particular review of the SG, I talk about how the wood color is also cherry, but it doesn't really give me like a natural wood color. It's almost like it's printed on. And I feel like that is the case for this. So I'm wondering if this is laminate, which I think is pretty interesting because I thought Guild was, you know, made in USA, uh, you know, so I don't know if they made a laminate release um, or if it's a solid wood, maybe I'm mistaken, but just from a impression standpoint of the finish and the wood, I'm not sure if this is solid wood. But for me, when I purchase my guitars, you know, I do the basic research, but to be honest, I don't really do too much research on the wood. You know, is it solid or laminate? Obviously, you know, if it's solid, it's better because it's, you know, better sounding and also a better resale value. But for this guitar, I bought it blindly, um, obviously, you know, I checked the price, I made sure the deal was good. But other than that, I didn't do any research on the specs or whatever. You know, I feel like this is not a wood or a solid wood guitar. Another interesting thing about this guitar, and I don't know if this is how it was made or if this became, if this happened due to, due to age, but the back is not straight. There's like a slight bulge on the back. And I'm wondering if that's because of old age. Sometimes, um, you know, when a guitar gets older and it's not maintained properly, there's like a bulge or like a belly or whatever. So I'm not sure if that's the case for this guitar. I, I don't think so. I think this is factory or it came like this originally because the bulge is like pretty symmetrical on both sides. It's not uneven or anything. And I honestly, didn't even know about this until I started playing with it. And I realized when I put it against my body, it wasn't a flat feeling. There was like a slight bulge. And it's hard to see from the camera, but if you put your hands over, the back is not a flat back like most acoustic guitars. You know, other than the laminate body, uh, which I think is laminate, I'm not sure, I have to double check. Everything on this guitar is very high quality. You know, I always check the strength and the stability of the neck. For me personally, I don't know if this is an accurate way to test the guitar quality and durability, but I always put my hand on the center of the neck and I kind of shake it around. Sometimes for cheaper guitars, it's really light and sometimes really flimsy, but for all the higher quality guitars that I've played and owned for acoustics, typically the really good quality ones, if you shake it in the middle and you hold it like this, it's really solid and really firm. And that's the same case that I am feeling for this Guild. It's a very firm and sturdy guitar. I don't get the sense that it's gonna break or it needs repairs, even though this is an early 70s, a 73, you know, which is pretty damn old. I'm also really big into headstock designs when it comes to guitars. To be honest, when I first saw a Guild in my life, I, I just thought it was a different headstock design you know it's not like a gibson or i guess it cl more closely resembles a gibson than any other brand it's not a fender type headstock it's not a martin 
Um, it's kind of like a reversed Epiphone or like a reverse Gibson. But you know, after playing with this guitar for a while and seeing more guilds throughout my years, I actually like the headstock design of a guild. They didn't copy any other any other company. I feel like they try to do their own unique thing. A lot of the times. Uh, for guitar companies, it's always a variation of the Strat headstock or, you know, the Gibson headstock or the Martin headstock. It's always some kind of variation of that. And it makes sense because those are probably the best designs that you can come up with in terms of the headstock. But Guild, they did a completely different approach. You know, they made their own unique, distinct looking headstock as well as the Guild logo the brand logo i actually really like this logo design so other than that you know apart from some minor dings and scratches um you know from wear over the years everything in this guitar is all original the tuners are original the bridge and the saddle is original the bridge pins may be unoriginal because uh when i saw the case that he gave me the original guild case it had separate uh, bridge pins in a different color it was like an ivory or like a white yellowish color so i don't know if he replaced it or you know if these are original but you know for me personally these minor things it it really doesn't affect or i don't really care about it you know as long as the main things on the guitar is original then i'm fine you know the tuners i like them to be original you know but the little things like the nut and like the bridge pins like it really isn't a big deal to me i know some people get really serious and anal about stuff like that but you know at the end of the day i buy a guitar to play you know not to really fuss about the specs or whatever so let me show you how this guitar sounds So it's a very different sound the guitar from, I say a Taylor, completely different. Taylor is m way more brighter. I feel like this uh, sounds more closer to a Gibson acoustic than any other acoustic that I've played. Maybe a Martin, but definitely not a Taylor. Taylor, uh, when you play it, for me at least, when you play it, 
um, you can immediately tell it's a Taylor. Taylor sound good, but sometimes it's just a little bit too bright uh, for my taste. I feel like Martins have a good balance of both bright and not bright. And even though this is my first guild that I've owned, I think this is actually my second favorite acoustic now. First being Martin, I'm a big Martin guy. Overall, I'd say that this is an excellent guitar, an excellent, very good sounding guitar, and also a very, just a sturdy and durable guitar. Like I said, the one thing I'm not really too sure about is the wood. You know, I don't know if this is solid, because it just doesn't look like solid wood. But I don't know, maybe, like I said, I don't have too much experience with identifying wood and stuff like that. But overall, I give this an 8.5. The tone is good, but the reason why I would rate it at that level at an 8.5 is just, dude, it's just really durable, dude. Like my main acoustic is a Martin J40. This is like the same stability as that, you know? There's not too much difference. 1973 Gill D25 Cherry. If you find it, I'd say try it out because it's a pretty damn good guitar.